And with this behavior, he touched this basic instinct in the women that of course all women have. And especially in a country where there is so little polarity, I think that maybe those women were even more vulnerable to this. Hello, my dear viewers. Welcome to my channel. My name is Malena and on this channel we are talking about femininity and sophistication. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos and join our community. In this video, I would like to talk about a recent documentary that came out on Netflix, The Tinder Swindler. So basically, I would like to break down this case and this story from a femininity or feminine self-worth point of view. I really, really couldn't stop thinking about it after I saw this documentary around one week ago. Because during watching it, there were so many things that popped up in my head that I understood from this uh, femininity, masculinity point of view. Also, it really, really caught my attention why the Tinder Swindler mostly chose women from the Scandinavian country. So we will also take a look on this and what it has to do with femininity and masculinity. We will take a look at his style, at how he presents himself and if his behavior is really a masculine behavior. So those are just a few aspects that I want to break down in this video and I hope you enjoy it. Take a tea, take some coffee and let's take a look at this case. So first of all, for those of you who haven't seen the documentary, it is a Netflix documentary, recently came out. So it's basically about the Israeli con artist Simon Leviu, or as his real name is Shimon Hayud. He basically scammed several women and uh, received millions of dollars in total. Three women who are in this documentary and who in the end worked together and managed to expose him. Maybe a small summary for those of you who haven't seen it yet. So this Simon Leviu contacted several girls via the dating app Tinder and pretended to be a billionaire, the son of a diamond mine owner who really exists, but he just used this identity. The girls are of course impressed by his very wealthy, charismatic appearance. He takes them on his private jet and invites them to luxury hotels restaurants and then slowly developed a romantic relationship with them via WhatsApp mainly, I have to say. And then after a time he suddenly pretends to be followed by his enemies and asks those girls to help him out financially with large sums. And the, the girls do that, they take bank loans, they make credit cards in their name and send him the money to help him but he uses the money to scam more girls with the same tactic. So it's like a very malicious, vicious circle. Of course, the story sounds so incredibly crazy, but really happened that we asked ourselves, why did those girls do that? Why did they believe him? Why did they send him those large sums of money? One of the girls, Cecily, she lost $250,000 this way by taking several bank loans. Why did they fall for him? So the first question that popped in my head after seeing this or during seeing this documentary was why did Simon mainly choose Scandinavian women? First of all, a disclaimer. This whole analysis is only my interpretation and my point of view and it might come across as very overgeneralizing or stereotypical because I will also bring in some cultural aspects, some mentality aspects and I'm very much aware of the fact that I'm generalizing. So this video is a very personal point of view. It is meant for entertainment and I'm sure that many women can identify with this point of view too. Having said this, let's start. I think that the reason why 
he picked many women from the Scandinavian countries or from the Western and Northern European countries as his victims, has to do partly with a very feminist mentality of an equality in romantic relationships, oftentimes a 50-50 mentality in those countries and it's rather normal for women to also help out financially. In contrast to countries in Eastern Europe, for example, such as Russia or Poland, where I come from, and the Middle Eastern countries or the Arab countries, the Asian countries. I'm pretty sure that if Simon had tried that with a Middle Eastern girl or maybe Eastern European girl, he wouldn't have been <laughs> successful. And this, I think, has to do with the mentality that is still there with regard to masculinity and femininity and with the belief that masculinity means to protect and provide also financially. This is why I think he was successful in those northern European countries because there I have the feeling, according to my experience, the polarity between men and women is a little bit lost in romantic relationships and I think that this is dangerous and combined with very very friendly and open-minded mentality that they have because they are incredibly friendly people I think this is a dangerous mixture and made them very easy prey to a guy like him in addition of course to the emotional and psychological manipulation so women in, for example, the Middle Eastern or the Eastern countries, they mostly value themselves more with regard to romantic interactions, especially in the beginning of a relationship or in dating. And these are just tendencies. Of course, there is everything everywhere. There are all kinds of women in all kinds of countries. But this is just a tendency and my observation as well as my personal experience. I observed that, especially in, for example, in the Eastern countries, women are not that fast in calling a man their boyfriend. Or in some countries, boyfriends even doesn't exist, especially in the Middle Eastern countries. So a man will never get this status that Simon got with those three girls and, and other women, of course only by pretending to be a flashy billionaire and by inviting them to his jet and writing some lovely words. People are very fast nowadays in um, yeah, accepting someone as their boyfriend and especially in this case it was a purely texting relationship. They have seen each other maybe once or twice. The rest was just texting and voice messages and uh, it was just a fantasy so he was their their boyfriend their future husband in their fantasy but in reality it wasn't like that and he was of course aware of this effect that it would have on on the girls so then we come to the next question why did the girls do that why did they send him those amounts of money why did they take loans why did they make credit cards in his name, Amex cards, the platinum card that he used for his expenses. So first the aspect that I have just talked about, mentality of why not, um, of course I can help the man financially, he's my boyfriend, that exists in the western countries and not so much in the eastern countries and that has to do with society and culture. In the beginning he lures them into this relationship, into believing and loving him by really lavishing them with luxury. So he first pretends to be an actual provider, a man of means, by inviting them to his jet, to a trip, to a fancy restaurant or a fancy luxury hotel, by sending them big, big bouquets of flowers but that's all. And with this behavior, he touched this basic instinct in the women that of course all women have. And especially in a country where there is so little polarity, I think that maybe those women were even more vulnerable to this treatment in the beginning. 
I think that internally, because it's biological, it's genetic, that a woman wishes for being protected, for being provided for, even if many women don't need it nowadays, or maybe just don't want it, there is still this, I would say, innate desire of the feminine to be protected, to be provided for. It is just something inside of us. I don't know any woman, even the most emancipated feminist, who wouldn't feel good by a man protecting her or um, yeah, providing for her in, in such a way. Simon knows this of instinctively and he tried to lure them in first by pretending to be this Prince Charming and they were of course charmed by him. And then, of course, there was a lot of manipulation, emotional and mental manipulation involved when he started calling them, oh, future wife, uh, the future mother of my children. He practically love bombed them with his texts and with his messages. A typical narcissistic strategy, by the way. And um, those women who aren't used to this kind of behavior and at the same time don't really have this concept of a real provider, they of course fell for it, for it. I mean, who wouldn't? If we are honest, under the same circumstances, I think most of us would have fallen for that, at least in the beginning. But then it goes on and he really establishes this strong, strong connection, this emotional bond. And on a woman, this has a big influence we of course start feeling responsible for him. And then when he starts sending those scary pictures of his bodyguard being injured and talks about those enemies that are trying to find and kill him and he needs money because his credit cards are being tracked, of course the girls panicked. And of course they wanted to help out because they saw him as, as their husband, basically, by their feelings. That was not real, but it was in their mind. So it is understandable. And plus, and the Scandinavian countries, you know, the Northern European countries are quite rich countries. So also it is maybe easier to get bank loans. It is easier to get a credit card. If I compare it to, to Eastern European, for example, because I was born in Poland, I have to say that those amounts of money are, of course, still a totally different number. But that's also something, as, as I said in the beginning, why he might have picked especially women from the Scandinavian or Northern European countries. And now, let's analyze Simon. How did he present himself? How did he behave? And what does his behavior say? How is it connected to the concept of the provider of the masculine man? So first of all, if we look at him and how he presents himself in the story, on the pictures, on the Instagram, we see that he is very, very flashy, that he uses designer brands, wears very flashy logos all over, from head to toe, nouveau riche style. So he shows all of his wealth and uh, in a way that is really in your face. Also his lifestyle, the jets, his flashy watches. He, um, he's posing like a model, presenting himself always in a very similar pose that looks quite fake, to be honest, and that doesn't fit into the concept of the masculine provider because a real masculine man he won't be that flashy in the spotlight so much this is actually a very very unusual behavior for a high value man especially as simon pretends to come from actually older money because he pretends to come from a big family diamonds and i think that normally people that come from old money or from those families they will rather wear of course high quality uh, clothes and maybe very expensive uh, clothes but they, they won't be so flashy they won't be so in your face and in a very very narcissistic way showing themselves on instagram like some girl that is <laughs> doing uh, selfies all the time this doesn't really fit 
it doesn't fit. In most cases, if a man is the real provider, if a man is a high value man, he won't do that and he won't behave this way. And what is he doing actually? And during those relationships, he is just spending money all the time and uh, he also shows this uh, on Instagram. He spends money on his lavish lifestyle. A real partner who cares for his girl <laughs> or his woman wouldn't ever ask her to lend him money, especially when he's a billionaire. I mean, doesn't he have any male friends with money? Doesn't he have any relatives with money as he comes from money? This is very contradictory. And then why should he ask his poor girl <laughs> for such a sum of money? Why would a real provider want a woman to take a loan? I think that a masculine man wouldn't be open for this kind of face loss because, I mean, it is a face loss. Why should he ask her first? But of course, for the girls, he sold it as yeah, I, I trust you so much. You are the most trusted person for me. And the girls also understood it like this. They thought, okay, he asks me because I am his, his nearest person. I am his soulmate. But if you look at it without this emotional lens, there are so many people that he could have asked. Why should he ask a girl that he just met? that he hasn't met in person more than twice. And also, why didn't he just sell some of his flashy $250,000 watches? I mean, in the end with the other girl, Pernilla, he even gives her one of his watches because the bank transfer didn't work. He promised to give her money back and then the bank transfer didn't work. So then he promised he, to give her one of his watches that are worth 100,000 or 200,000 dollars. Of course, it was a fake watch and it also didn't work. But I mean, theoretically, if those were not fake watches, why didn't he sell them in the first place before asking his girl to take a bank loan or, or to make a credit card on his name? So it all doesn't make sense, especially from this point of view of the masculine and the feminine. But then luckily, the third girl in the documentary, which is a Dutch girl, she at first fell for him and for his scam and also sent him money. But then she realized that he was a scammer and also contacted the other girls and they tried to yeah, expose him. The first one who exposed him was actually Cecily, the girl who lost 250,000 uh, dollars in, on him because she contacted a newspaper and they exposed him and then the Dutch girl saw this and contacted him and asked him what is this and he still tried to yeah to continue with the scam a real psychopath <laughs> behavior he of course didn't give her back the money that she lent him so um, after he asked again for more money she had the idea to sell all his designer clothing that he had because he was in Amsterdam at this time and she took this cloth and sold it but she didn't send him the money so the money that she gained with the designer clothing compensated a little bit for the money that he has scammed her and then in the end they managed to alarm the police he is uh, arrested but I think didn't really last for a long time because they continued scamming, unfortunately. So with regards to the Dutch girl and that she also doesn't come across as so emotionally involved in the video and a bit more rational, I mean, she outsmarted him a little bit. When I think about um, the German girls, I mean, I live in Germany, I, I'm living here, I'm also German. I think they are also a little bit more rational with regard to their feelings just at least many of them. Although there is also this kind of equality, sometimes 50-50 mentality, and the polarity between male and female is not that big. The aspect of putting still lots of rationality in your relationships is a bit more common here. And in the Netherlands, I think, this is all my observations again, my personal observations. 
Uh, I come also from an intercultural background, also professionally. I wouldn't ever say that it is like that. This is an observation uh, of a tendency. And also if you've seen the documentary, he also has a Russian girlfriend for, for a time. One of the girls didn't have a romantic relationship with him. She was just a friend. He also took her to trip. And um, she also tells that in this time he had um, another girlfriend from Russia. But apparently this girlfriend didn't give him anything <laughs> financially. So this also reminded me of, of my theory <laughs> in the beginning. So well, what can we learn from this story? A true masculine provider and high value man would not ask you for money if he's a billionaire. He wouldn't ask you in the first place and especially not when he just met you after a short time. He would never put you in the situation of having to take a bank loan or credit card just for his expenses. Also, never rely on words. Never rely on just words. On written words or, or, or on spoken words. Words are just words. And if there are no actions that follow those words, the words are worth nothing. Nothing but a beautiful sound. And maybe a beautiful meaning. But if not followed by actions, don't rely on words. Third, a texting relationship is not a real relationship. A relationship in which you communicate mainly by texting or by voice messages and you have barely seen the guy, maybe just seen him once or twice, it, this is not a relationship. Because while they were believing to have a boyfriend a future husband, this guy was flying around the whole world, spending their money with other girls, sending them beautiful words. Them and the other girls too, of course. We also see this phenomenon in the so-called love scammers. So those are organized groups that scam older women, but and also older men, uh, by online dating. They basically do the same, but they don't even meet their victims. They really scam them by purely text and pictures that are not, not even real. And this happens and people fall for that. Vulnerable people, people who are longing for love. Always remember that this kind of relationship is not a real relationship. Therefore, this boyfriend cannot be treated like someone that is an important part of your life because he in reality isn't. So I hope you liked my analysis and now it's your turn. Let me know in the comments what you think about this topic. If you share my opinion or if you have another opinion, all opinions are appreciated. And also tell me about your experiences, how you think you would have reacted, how you view all of this. I am very, very interested. I'm really looking forward to read from you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I would really be happy to see you again. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Bye bye.